Matthew Bolton, restless to gun for new innovations. Born on Friday, 3rd September 1728, Matthew Bolton grew up with his rich family in Birmingham, United Kingdom. Matthew Bolton Jr. was born to Matthew Bolton Sr., a toy maker and manufacturer of small metal products, and his wife Christiana Bolton in Birmingham. Shortly after his birth, his father's business prospered and the whole family moved to a well-to-do neighborhood in the Snow Hill area of Birmingham. Matthew was sent to an academy in Derryton, which was on the other side of Birmingham. He left school when he was 15 and by 17 he invented an outstanding system for inserting animals into buckles. This technique became so popular that the buckles were important to Britain and portrayed as the latest French development. His marriage. On the 3rd of March, 1749, Matthew married his distant cousin Mary Robinson, who was also the daughter of a wealthy and successful textile dealer. The couple lived briefly with Mary's mother in Litchfield before they moved to Birmingham, where Matthew was made a partner to his father's business at the age of 21. Matthew and his wife had three daughters, but all of them died in infancy in the early 1750s. Soon after their daughter's death, Mary's health failed and resulted in her death on August 1759. Even though Matthew grieved for his wife, it wasn't long after her death that he began to woo Mary's sister, Anne. Although the ecclesiastical law forbade anyone to marry a deceased wife's sister, Matthew and Anne got married on the 25th June 1760 at St. Mary's Church, Rothenheit. Anne's brother, Luke, strongly opposed the union, believing that Matthew was seeking to control much of their family fortune. Ironically, Luke died in 1764 and his estate was transferred to his sister Anne and thus into Matthew's control. Matthew and Anne had two children, Matthew Robinson Bolton and Anne Bolton. His career Matthew Bolton Sr. retired in 1757 and died in 1759. After his father's death, Matthew inherited his father's business. In 1761, Matthew went on to build a new factory in Soho. The factory produced small metal articles like buckles, silver buttons, gilt, Sheffield plates, and lots of other items. However, after meeting with Benjamin Franklin, Matthew became interested in the development of steam engines as a power source for his factory. In 1768, Matthew met with James Watt, a Scottish engineer, and decided to join him to further develop the steam power. When the industrialist John Roebuck, an inventor and close friend to Matthew, went bankrupt, Matthew accepted John's share in James's first steam engine patent as the debt repayment. As a result, he and James became partners in 1775 in the steam engine business. With the help of William Murdoch, Matthew and James were able to establish the steam engine industry. Matthew envisaged the great industrial need for steam power and persuaded James to design the double-acting rotating steam engine and the Watt engine for powering the lapping machines at his Soho factory. The task was monstrous and burdened with mechanical delays, legal battles, and financial difficulties. However, they were successful, and their invention boasted of an energy efficiency that is three times greater than that of the present Newcomen engines. In the 1780s, Matthew's business became popular as the leading English manufacturer. He was seen as the man who brought James's idea and intellect to realization through his manufacturing expertise and optimism. Some years later, Matthew developed and patented a steam-powered coin mint that forced counterfeiters out of the coin minting business and re-established public confidence in the English monetary system. He produced coins in large quantities for the East India Company and also supplied the Royal Mint with sufficiency machinery. Matthew's coins were not only beautiful, but were also very hard to copy. In 1785, he became a Fellow of the Royal Society the prestigious Lunar Society of Birmingham, and in 1807, he built a theater in Birmingham. Community Work Aside from machines and technological inventions, Matthew was also involved in community services in Birmingham. With the support of his friend, Dr. John Ash, he built a hospital, Birmingham General, in the town in 1779. He also helps the community to build the general dispensary where outpatient treatments are received. He also served as a community treasurer. 
Matthew helped with the building of the New Street Theater, Birmingham, in 1774. Matthew was concerned about the alarming crime rate in Birmingham, and as a result, he organized volunteers to patrol the community streets at night for crime reduction. He also supported the local militia by supplying the money for weapons. In 1794, Matthew was elected as the high sheriff of his county of residence, Staffordshire. Bolton's Last Days after the expiration of Matthews and James's steam engine patent, they both retired and handed over their respective share in the business to their sons. However, Matthew continued with the work until he was 80. He visited the coin press to supervise the coins being minted. His death Matthew Bolton died on the 17th of August 1809 after an illness of the kidneys. Before his death, he was known as one of the famous figures in the scientific circles of his time. His son, Matthew Robinson Bolton, inherited his business and more than 500 steam engines were restored in Britain and beyond. As a young person looking to be successful, we challenge you to get rid of stagnating thoughts and look beyond your present shortcomings. If you continue to strive for your goals, you will achieve them. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.